Greetings gastronauts, this is Keith Cooks, I'm Keith, and today I'm going to make something that isn't really a conventional thing that you would find in an old cookbook. I'm going to make a steak slice. So what's a steak slice, Keithy? Well, it's something like this. If you get it from Greg's, uh, well known and, well, you know, they're everywhere. Uh, chain of kind of bakers and sandwich shops um, they call it a steak bake and basically it's like it's like a pasty but square well rectangular and um, they're actually quite nice <laughs> so I had a request from Kriege to uh, do a review and copy recipe of Greg's sausage rolls and I happen to know that's uh, gonna be a complete waste of time because that's you know basically my opinion of their sausage rolls. However, I do like the steak bake, so um, that, that should be less of a labour of love and produce something that I actually want to eat. <laughs> okay, Greg's steak bake taste test. So I've actually got two. Um, that one I've just warmed up and I'm gonna eat that one. And, and this one, I'm just gonna dissect it and see what's inside. So that'll be fun. <laughs> um, right, now, to be fair, when you, when you get them fresh from the shop, they are not soggy and rubbery like that. They are crisp and crunchy and the flaky pastry goes everywhere. Mm. Mm. Okay. As always, the first bite is a mouthful of pastry. Um, I've just noticed these are, they've got a like a black dot or brown dot both of them I suspect they get baked in a conveyor oven sort of thing because it is browned on the underside as well but I won't be doing that yep good chunk of meat in that that was nice so you can see you know that it's it's quite a decent filling and um, the gravy's tasty savory meaty Okay, that, that was really good. Uh, I've just left the crusts because I leave the crusts. That's what I do. Um, there was one teeny weeny bit of gristle in the meat, but I managed to swallow it, so I'm not complaining too much about that. Otherwise, commendable, actually. <laughs> right, let's um, have a look at this one. So weigh the whole thing. That's 139 grams. And you can see on the top there are parallel diagonal slashes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them, about a centimetre apart. Okay, scalpel. So that, that crimping's not actually folded over at all, it's just pressed together. Yum, 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 yum. <laughs> so let's weigh the filling. Right, that is 54 grams. And 83 for the pastry. Does that add up? No, it doesn't. <laughs> We've lost two grams somewhere. Okay, I need to measure it. So that's um, 115 long and 100 wide millimeters. So that's the anatomy of a Greg's steak bake. It shouldn't be too difficult. Let's do it. Ingredients for the filling. I've got 400 grams of stewing beef, um, a medium onion, a bay leaf, and some ground black pepper and a litre of beef stock. So it's just made up with two stock cubes. I didn't spot any other herbs in the Greg's steak bake. So, right, um, this was pre-cubed and those cubes are way too big for this. So I'm just gonna Cut them down, cut them down to size. And if if you come across any 
any bits of stuff like that, get rid of it because that will that will not be nice in your steak slice thing. Okay, there's my beef chopped up. I'm going to cook it in the pressure cooker and it'll take about 20 minutes under pressure. I know a song about that. <laughs> if you don't have such a thing, you can do it in a conventional big old stock pot. Uh, but it will take about three to three and a half hours for your beef to become properly tender. So we just pop the beef in with the stock and set that off to boil. We wash the knife and get a clean chopping board. <laughs> and I uh, just want to chop the onion into little bits. And they go in with the beef as well. And a good grinding of black pepper. Right, the filling is um, chugging away in the pressure cooker for 20 minutes and um, so I'll get on with the uh, making the pastry shells basically. So plenty of flour on your worktop and your <laughs> shop bought puff pastry or flaky pastry because I'm not making my own. I do sometimes but not for this. <clears throat> and pre-rolled as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. So actually, all I've got to do is cut that to the right dimensions. Yeah. It's a little bit sticky, so I'll just flour it. Right, so we want rectangles 100 millimeters by 115, so just measure that. That's 260 by, by about 360. Ugh. That said, hmm, um, if I do it exactly I can get six. I can one, two, three, four, five, six, and a bit left over for a little one. Um, right, so let's, <laughs> let's not mark it with a pencil. I'm sure Greg's have uh, marvellous machines that do this. <laughs> so I'll just stack these up and put them in the fridge until we need them. So we're only going to get Six or seven, no, three or three or four out of that, which is a bit mean because I think I've got enough filling for about 20. Anyway, okay, pressure cooking's done, and we've got a bit more, well, quite a lot more liquid than we need, so I'm boiling it rapidly to reduce that. And I've fished out the bay leaf and I'm going to sift in some flour to thicken it up. And don't worry too much about lumps in your gravy because they'll just kind of disappear if you have any eventually. Okay, we're getting there. So I've got a nice thick meaty gravy. Look at that. I tasted it for salt and added a teeny bit and also a bit more pepper. So that needs to go in the fridge to cool down completely before we can assemble the steak slice bake things. Okay we're ready to assemble and bake our steak slices so you want to preheat your oven to 210 degrees celsius if it's a fan convection oven, 230 if it's a conventional one or gas mark 8. So I'm not doing that yet because it's noisy. So I've got a baking sheet lined with a, an old silicon mat, I've got my filling, I've got my pastry, I've got a little bowl of cold water, I've got an egg and a splash of milk so that's for an egg wash. I'm gonna just make that up quickly. One egg, bit of milk and whiz whiz whiz. And the reason we put milk in with the egg is it just makes it flow better. Okay let's build our thingies. So I think I'm going to be able to, yeah, I'm going to be able to make four. So I want four pieces of pastry. And um, one of them is slightly odd size shape. 
because that was made up from the leftover bits. It's probably easier to wet the edge before you put the filling in. Um, we just wet it so that it will stick better. And just place a dollop of the filling and press the top down onto it. You wouldn't normally make a, a pasty like this. You would um, actually fold over one sheet of pastry and then stick the other edges because uh, that means you've got at least one edge that is perfectly secure and isn't going to leak. <laughs> the sort of crimping on the Greg's one was quite quite wide so I've got this fork, big fork, with uh, the tines are quite far apart and just crimp that around the edge. Okay so when you've got all your lids stuck on you want to paint them with the egg wash don't forget the edges so we've done the egg wash now we just need to score the top score lines a centimeter apart ish half an inch ish and be very careful not to go all the way through the pastry but you have to do this after you've done the egg wash not the other way around because uh, as, as the pastry cooks and puffs up it will kind of spread apart and we'll pop these in the oven for about 15 minutes we'll check them after that see how they're getting on should be done okay time's up so let's get them out Oh yeah! Hey! <laughs> well, they don't look exactly the same as Greg's. Um, I think they look better, but that's just me. I'm biased. Um, so now I need to get those onto the wire rack and cooling a bit before I can eat them. Actually, I've got to wait for Mrs. Keith Cooks to come home before we can do a taste test. So, ah, <sighs> tumpty tum. Right, taste test time with Mrs. Keith Cooks. <laughs> oh, these look good. Thank you. Come from Greg's. Uh huh. Yeah, I had one of Greg's ones yesterday, didn't I? And it was nice. She had the deconstructed one that I weighed and <laughs> measured. Put it in the microwave first, mind. It was good. So I'm sorry it. the cold, but it's your fault because <laughs> you're at work. Mmm. Mmm. -mm. Mmm. Mmm. It's lovely pastry as well. Tesco's. Mmm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Well that worked. I love it when flaky pastry soaks up all the gravy. And I hate it when it inside. flakes everywhere. Mm -hmm. But there you go. Mmm. Right. Is that a winner? Winner, winner. Yeah. Steak bake dinner. Mm -hmm. There you go, fake steak bake. <laughs> anyway, if you enjoyed that, give it a like, uh, share, subscribe, mm -hmm. make a donation, become a patron, all that lovely stuff. Try the recipe at home. Try the recipe at home. <laughs> <laughs> this is good. Mm -hmm. And thanks for watching, and see you next time. <laughs>